This is the Philopter. It's used to determine glasses prescriptions. <clears throat> it consists of um, 86 different lenses inside the device. This is a series of test lenses, um, two openings in test 10 um, surfaces or lenses. This is uh, nearsighted, farsighted corrections in quarter unit increments. This knob controls nearsighted, farsighted lenses in 3.0 diopter increments. And this dial controls astigmatism lenses in quarter increments. The ferropter typically hangs from a stand inside the exam room. However, I've constructed this stand to allow me to clean lenses away from clinics without the restrictions of clinic operating hours. I've designed this stand to hold a light which can be slid from one side to the other and also I have it adjustable depending on what tabletop I'd be using it on. This is a fairly heavily used ferropter which is in for a four month recheck because it's been used so much even after uh, only four months some of the lenses are already getting substantially soiled. This is the lens closest to the patient, a series of different test lenses, another opening, a series of other test lenses, and this is a closed surface called an occluder so when you test one eye you occlude the fellow eye. The next lens close to the patient, and, and this because it's close to the patient and used a lot, uh, this is the three doctor sphere change lens. Uh, three, six, get the worst dirtiness the quickest, and then getting up to 12, 15, 18, they get dirty less often, and then moving into the plus side, it goes back to plus six and then plus three. So even though it's only been only four months, this fropter looks worse after four months than a typical ophthalmology fropter does after a year because the optometrists use the <clears throat> fropters like 20 different patients a day and ophthalmologists use them far less frequently. The next one is um, quarter unit increments which is a little bit further away from the patient uh, nearsighted correction. Now after four clicks it throws in the a plus 175 combined with a minus 3 to give a, a minus 1.25. In the other direction, going back to 0, 7 clicks, and then the 8th click combines two lenses. So on the doctor side of the ferropter, the, the the first lens is the astigmatism lenses. They go in quarter diopter, quarter unit increments. Smudge there. After four clicks, what it does is it, it moves to a second wheel and it now clicks in a 1.2 div diopter lens and then it again adds quarter units on top of it. So at this point you're basically looking through two different lenses when you're at either a 150 or anything above that. Now when you get to the 250 it's a single lens and then it again combines quarter units until you get up to 375 and then it adds uh, quarter units till you get to a 5. Now back to one lens again and adds quarter units till you get to a 6 and then it's back to 0. So if you get a prescription that's like um, minus 150 and minus 125, you're actually looking through four different lenses. And so, as you can see under this lighting condition, four different lenses is, is really quite dirty. And so the idea is to get them um, cleaned off so they're back to closer to transparency. Now for the most part when I'm cleaning for optical lenses, I'm typically cleaning them one lens at a time by presenting 
the lenses in a way that it exposes both sides of the lens at the same time. So operating just this wheel, I can clean the quarter adopter all the way up to the one and then the one and a quarter, both surfaces at a time, and then go forward five clicks to the 250. I can clean that lens going forward five clicks to the uh, 375. I can clean that lens and then forward to a five, I can clean that lens. So there's eight different lenses of the astigmatism variety on one side. Then there's an additional test lens to test the power and the position of that astigmatism lens. And then this lens is actually a combination of two lenses, two prisms, which are apex to apex or base to base. And they go in, in various increments up to 20 units down, 20 units up, or moving the same amount to the side. Similarly, the, the sphere lens for the nearsightedness and farsightedness, the red ones being nearsighted correction and black ones being farsighted, up to a minus one you can clean these lenses on both sides, up to a plus 175, you can clean these lenses on both sides. And then the three doctor changes, you can change it in three doctor increments and again clean each lens on both sides. And then the auxiliary lenses from this knob, you can clean these 10 surfaces on both sides by operating this wheel separately. So this actually makes a total of 43 lenses on this side and there's the same amount on this other side for a total of 86 per machine. You can expect to spend, for a heavily soiled foropter, anywhere from uh, four to six hours to clean one machine. And then there's also internal and external maintenance that needs to be done on these as well. For lightly soiled machines, um, uh, proportionally less time, but, but still you've got to go through all 86 lenses uh, on each device. Now actually this lens, you can clean the outside and you can clean the, the, the opposite side, but you can't clean between the two lenses because there's two lenses that are basically in contact with each other. If you get filming between the lens, and this has to be sent into an optical place that can disassemble this unit. This is a synchronized cross cylinder which is, the feature's been out for well over 30 years, but when you turn this knob, it turns this lens by a similar amount. Now one problem with this is, as this, lubric the lubrication inside this lens mechanism dries out, it gets more and more resistance from moving from one position to another, and then when you flip away the lens, it can cause the, the axis to rotate. And so what I find is necessary to do is to lubricate this internal mechanism so that it moves more freely from one position to another and doesn't cause the axis to dislocate when it's flipped out of position. So that requires some disassembly. After the two retaining screws are removed, you remove the plate label and then there's a spring mechanism. And next is the test lens itself underneath that. And then lubrication I do by actually dripping oil in this space and agitating the mechanism to spread the oil around and get it into the underlying grease so that it's not as dried out and then it tends to be um, more freely operating. This can take like 15 minutes for, for each side to, to get this mechanism properly lubricated. With the foropter disassembled, there's the astigmatism wheel, which again consists of um, four lenses and an opening, and underneath it is another group of four lenses plus an opening, which combine to go in quarter unit increments from 0 to 6.0 units of power. In similar fashion, there's this wheel which is moving now, which is the quarter increment wheel, and underneath that is the 
three adapter wheel and underneath that is the auxiliary wheel with its various test lenses. With the Foropter further disassembled, there's the quarter adapter wheel which consists of one opening and 11 lenses. Next is the three adapter wheel which again is 11 lenses and one opening. And then next is the auxiliary wheel. Usually it's not necessary to disassemble deeper than this, although there have been times when something gets jammed in the gear mechanism underneath this and further disassembly is required to get it back into operation. At this point it's just to make sure that there's no debris inside. Some lenses get filled with lint in less than a year, uh, but it's important to make sure that these wheels are free rolling and not filled with debris, that this mechanism turns easily and um, it also rotates separately from this this pin. I can't do it with one hand here, but it's to make sure that this mechanism clicks properly apart. So basically it's there's a bearing underneath this wheel, then a bearing on top of it, then this lens wheel fits into position. In touch to do with one hand. And then the bearing on this side, bearing on the other side. And when all this is in place and lined up, this collar will snap into place and then a lock nut goes on top of it and the lens power wheel lines up on top of that. And they only line up one way so you don't have to worry about getting it together wrong, but they, they do have to be reassembled so all the parts move smoothly and they're properly lubricated and any excess debris is cleaned out. And that's pretty much for the internal maintenance, which depending on what you find inside can, can take a, an hour or more per side uh, to clean everything out and make sure it's properly lubricated and reassembled. Now the way the Ferropter is designed is that the little tips of this mechanism interact with the pin and the two little pegs on the back of this wheel and every time this wheel goes around 360 degrees it picks up the edge of this and moves the underlying wheel forward by one increment and then the next time around the same thing happens the pins pick it up and move this forward by one increment. Then when you go in the opposite direction, just the opposite happens. And so the device automatically moves forward in quarter unit increments by combining the lens powers of these two power lens power wheels. So now with the power wheels reassembled, you can see as it advances, it then clicks both wheels simultaneously at this point between, which is actually the 1.0 of minus and the 1.25 of minus. And the same process continues until it goes around again. And again combines the lens. It keeps going in quarter unit increments until it gets all the way to the end. And then when it reaches 19.0 of minus, the next click takes it to 16.75 of plus. Until they switch into the opposite extreme of farsightedness, but it keeps going continuously like this. Until you eventually get back to zero. With this three adapter sphere knob in place, if the doctor has to move large amounts of power, they, he can go, he or she can go in three adapter increments, whether to put in the power or to remove the power that's already there. It's not necessary to go in quarter unit increments all the way from beginning to end. In similar fashion, the astigmatism lenses 
are controlled by five little pins, four of them short and one of them longer. Here's the longer pin. When the longer pin interacts with it, it actually moves both wheels together. And when the shorter pins interact with the mechanism, it advances just the quarter unit lens one at a time. And then again, both wheels move every, every fifth click. Uh, on one case, the, um, the longer pin popped out of one of the phoropters about a year ago, and the device wouldn't work anymore. It could only go from um, 0 to 1 instead of 0 to 6, and so, um, which is why it was a, I had previously set the clinic up to have a spare phoropter on location. They were able to immediately swap the uh, device with a functional one <clears throat> to get the exam room working immediately. The vast majority of time spent um, servicing for opters, though, is, uh, is actually very tedious and low-tech. Cleaning the lenses, um, uh, basically what I use is a set of magnifier glasses so I can get a close-up view of the lens. Um, basically, Q-tips, a uh, dish to hold some lens cleaning solution, and dip the Q-tip in there, wipe the lens, dry it with the other side, then do the other side of the lens and then I find out, well, it's not that clean and then start over again, grab another Q-tip and keep going until I, I'm satisfied that that lens is clean. When that one's clean, move on to the next lens and then, you know, go through the whole sequence of lenses until the entire phoropter is finished. And then go back from the start and see if the lenses now have developed any film because you think they're dry, you think they're clear, and you move on to the next lens, but when you go back later you find that, that the lens has dried off the rest of the way and now there's a residual film, you need to reclean it in, in some cases. So um, it's, a, it's a long, tedious process, which is many hours on end per phoropter very often. And that, that basically concludes our tour of, of how to um, how I go about servicing uh, for Optus for Kaiser.